What's going on guys? My name is Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you will not regret it. And if you're a returning subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back and I appreciate the support. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see my email address. If you guys want to drop off anything that you think would be good for the viewing audience that will make a good video or just an article that you wanted to share with me personally or just to say hi. Guys, the uh, email address is right there. By all means, contact me. I'll try my best to contact you back, which I usually do. So, and you know, I appreciate you spending time with me as a day. But guys, listen, I want to talk about something because I was sitting here and I was just looking at the database of the Memphis database and trying to locate a certain individual that I'll speak about a little later. But um, tonight I'm going to be wrapping up my, uh, you know, I did all four of the officers. The last one I'm going to do tonight is Demetrius Haley. And I saved him for last for a reason. And I'll go into that video later on tonight so you guys can stay tuned to that. But I want to talk about something that nobody's talking about. You know, everybody is caught up in the shock and awe of what happened to Tyree Nichols. And you know my opinion on C.J. Davis. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You know, they always talk about she needs more supervisors and all of this stuff. That's a bunch of crap. And you heard me say it. That's a bunch of crap. But I'm going to introduce you to two more, in fact, three people today that, you know, are just as important and just as liable as her for the blame of what happened to this young man. And today I want to introduce you to two people. The first person I'm going to introduce you to is Colonel Preston Pre Prentice Jolly which is pictured here. And the other guy I want you to learn is uh, Colonel Marcus Worthy. Now, both of these are uh, unit commanders. Prentice Jolly is a unit commander of the Special Forces teams and organized crime, you know, arresting drug dealers and suspected people of doing, you know, all type of organized situations. And Colonel Marcus Worthy, he is responsible for all of the traffic stops, violations, and all this other stuff. Now, these guys, or both of them at one point, used the Scorpion team. Or the Scorpion team might be under the jurisdiction of both, depending on the job. But these guys right here, and the reason why I'm doing a video about these two dudes, they are directly under who? C.J. Davis. Remember I was telling you? You get a lot of people with positions, and then they had it's, it's, it's like an umbrella. You got the top, C.J. Davis, and then it starts to branch off. These are the first parts of the branch. Now, under them, they have their own they have their own supervisors that report to them. But all in all, these are the big three. The nuclear triad. Here it is. And, uh, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. They all share the blame of what happened to Tyree and all of the stuff that's going on with Memphis. Memphis being in a financial bond, not being able to pay out this settlement, all this could have been avoided if all three of these people had did their jobs. And that's the big thing. Colonel uh, Prentice Jolly is a U.S. Army veteran, so he's used to discipline and achieving objectives working as a team. Colonel Marcus Worthy, I don't know if he has a military background, but I mean, he has to be somebody to be put in that position. Same with Mr. Jolly. Or Colonel Jolly. But my thing is, is this, guys, and I'm going to stop this for a second, and I'm going to say something to you which I thought was impressive, but also is shameful with the results that what I thought was impressive could yield. I'm looking at the database. I did not know that Memphis has a lot of black police officers that are in prominent uh, positions of power. C.J. Davis, the chief of police, it's impressive. He's a woman. That's very good. Colonel Prentice, Jolly. He's the uh, unit commander. You know what I'm saying? Of organized crime. Colonel Marcus Worthy, the unit commander of traffic stops and, uh, you know, special ops. Guys. I'm looking on the thing at all these different people in positions of power. I mean, the most prominent folks, and they're all black folks in a city that has a lot of black people. Now, 
That's impressive. But what's depressing, depressing about it is this. Why is the city being torn up? If I was one of those folks and I was elected in one of those positions, which I would be honored to be if I was a police officer, first thing I would know, and all three of these know, is struggles between the community and police. I would do my best to do my job in changing the way people see us as police officers, especially being black and knowing that black people out here are being abused by the police. And not just black people, but all people. These people sitting around here knowing. Now, she's saying she didn't know it was complaints. I bet they did. And I know they came to you. See, the thing is, it's too much buck passing here. Everybody's passing the buck and collecting paychecks. Now, I don't know these gentlemen personally, but they got to share the blame. Why? Because these specialized units. And remember, she said, ho, oh, we're going to disband the Scorpion unit. They spread them between these two units. So some of them went back to traffic, doing uh, special ops in traffic, and the other ones went to organized crime, breaking in doors and, 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 and attacking drug dealers or whatever, you know, taking down drug dealers and stuff. Nothing changes. <coughs> there are stories about stories, you know, I can see on the internet of Memphis PD abusing people that were that they weren't even in the Scorpion team. Just regular officers doing crazy stuff. And it's like she put them right back in, the, I guess, to where they, wherever they came out of. And I'm going to tell you something. Another reason why I say these people have blame, the supervisors under them, these specialized units, they take a special type of officer, a hand-picked officer, usually one that makes what? A lot of arrests and don't take no junk. And... These people are responsible for picking those type of people or putting people in position to pick them type of people. And they what? Signed off on it. You understand what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? They are no more uh, innocent than C.J. Uh, Davis. And the thing that's messed up, like I said, these are people of color. Memphis is a historical place. And this is how I would look at it if I was in power, some type of position of power where I could help the community. Memphis is a historical place. Dr. King was there. You know what I'm saying? I think Dr. King was assassinated there as well. And just like Al Sharpton said at the funeral, it's a damn shame that somebody that wanted to bring hope and change for the betterment of black folks was assassinated in the same in a place that one of the most prolific crimes against somebody uh, of color by police had happened. It's like nobody learned their lesson. Nobody. It's like we forget how far we came as people and where we really want to go. And it aggravates me with the whole situation. It's a bunch of buck, buck packing, passing. These gentlemen right here are just as guilty as her. Yesterday they had the, uh, the uh, secondary... Uh, City council meeting, talking about how long they're going to uh, keep the people fired. And they said something in there that made me think. I don't know if uh, these guys are fired or not. Because they were talking about, oh, well, how long are we going to be before we reinstate them? Reinstatement means you suspended. So are they fired or are they suspended? I think they're telling the media one thing, but they're doing something else behind closed doors. If you don't believe me, go look at the uh, video on uh, WREG. When they had the city council meeting yesterday, which was Tuesday, talking about the other officers that were supposed to be fired or let go. And the EMT people, who I also believe, need to go to jail too. Because their lack of, uh, you know, urgency and all that stuff. A man had a broken neck, was traumatized, kicked in the face several times, and they sat around too. That's jail time. They're just as guilty as the cops. But man, listen, I just wanted to take the time to introduce you to some of these people that are the faces behind fear and a lot of the destruction that's going on and oppression that's going on to the citizens of Memphis. Whether you black, green, purple, white, red, this is who they are. And you may not like what I say or at, at times, but I'm trying to give you the best content I can, guys, and not just for entertainment value. I want you to think. These are people 
and I'm talking about black listeners. These are people that look like us and have a ability to create change. Black folks dominate the prison uh, system. That's a well-known fact. At least in Memphis, they could have made a difference and they didn't. Guys, leave me a comment. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I don't mean to get upset, but man, damn, I mean, every time we're in a position of power, it's like we don't exercise it or use it for the right, for the betterment of just mankind and just making things better. It's like nobody wants to fix the stereotype. And that's what hurts. As always, guys, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.